Hey, Kurt. Yo. What are we doing? Getting ready to swap out our Tesla driver board from a base unit to the sport drive, which we now support. This is the actual drive unit that came out of the EL1 drift car, the Napoleon drift car that you might've seen up at Holly High Voltage last year. Now that we have control over the sport drive, we're gonna install a sport drive. So we're gonna have another 150 horsepower. At the same time, I'm going to be taking out the Coif LSD and limited slip differential, swapping that into the sport drive as well. When you're, when you're doing a, a project like this, there's some things you need to be aware of that could really bite you, trip you up, cost you a lot of time or money. <laughs> All right, hold on a second, loss. Almost a major good catch. What I think we should do is if we can go back to the start of this, and pick up from there, then you can see what I'm talking about. We'll start at the beginning. Before you get it apart, you have your high tension bars, your, your three phases that run from your, your inverter over to your motor. That's stashed behind that cool little orange plug that everyone always sees. And I'm gonna pull that off and show you what's behind it. You have your three high voltage phase cables coming across. You'll notice that there's a bolt here. All the case bolts are out already. We are gonna split the case to change the, the limited slip diff, but there's two bolts still in here quite a ways. First off, you have to take these three bolts out in order to split. There's a small cable running from the inverter into the motor side, and that's actually for a thermistor. When splitting the cases in a normal transmission, you just split the cases completely apart. In this case, you can't do it. If you did that, you'd actually break that wire, and I understand it's a major fiasco to try to get that swapped out or repaired. I leave these in when we're splitting the case initially, and then as we bring it apart further, I like to have two people, one managing the front where the actual differential is, and the other at this end with the inverter and motor, making sure that this doesn't exceed about an inch and a half to two inches max, and then you can clamshell it to get your actual whole differential out. These have like a dielectric compound, it's almost like a paste to ensure the continuity and prevent corrosion. So that sometimes they just, they don't wanna come out real easy. And because this is coming out of, out of the race car, out of the drift car, it actually has a quick disconnect for your DC voltage coming into the inverter case. So that's different cabling than it actually came with the factory. So we're gonna pull the end cover off here, just below this cap. So you wanna be careful with all this stuff that you don't break the plastic because everything's O-ring. This does a really good job of protecting everything inside. But you'll see a B plus and a B minus. So that's obviously your hot and your, your, your positive and negative. I like to just add a Sharpie indicator up top, you know, both sides positive and negative, And I do the same thing at the plug end. And it's just, just simplifies things to just make sure you're not gonna make any errors. To, and that's that. So no guesswork. We'll be doing the same on the other motor package on this side. So the next part is I'm gonna actually split the cases and get them up against the bolts that I mentioned earlier that we were keeping loose. Any case you've ever split, you always find a really nice casting relief where you can leverage it apart without penetrating the machine surface. For whatever reason, Tesla decided not to leave that. Maybe they thought you were never gonna have to split it. There's only a couple little areas. So there's one right here above the rear motor mount. You can see where it's slightly proud. You have a similar situation just above the motor mount on the far end. And this is, always feels so wrong to do something like this, but it's, it's what works. So now we have the cases slightly split. I'm staying at the bolt head areas. I'm not putting the screwdriver in between the machine surfaces. You can hear the change in tone. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera or by my mic. It's sort of a, like a hollow dump dump. Now there's big, beautiful alignment dowels in here. And then if you look inside, there's our friend just behind it. See this white cable? That guy right there, you gotta be so careful. I'm up against my bolt head. So this is the point where I'd actually say it's time to stop and transition over to the time lapse. This is, this is actually a pretty cool conversion because this is a much newer base drive and that's an earlier performance drive. And if you notice down in this area, there's some machined flats. And then on the other one, there's actually holes. So there was a carrier bearing for the differential. So knowing that Tesla wanted the, the, the diff to sort of stay on that side, stay engaged with the pinion, when you're disassembling, that makes it a little bit easier. So as Sam and I brought the cases apart, I used a larger bar to just sort of push the diff back to maintain it in that carrier bearing on that side. So your pinion bearing stays seated. That allow us to get it apart. Really carefully separate that and really watch that to make sure you don't pull that out. Yeah, so we're really close to maximum separation right now. You can see your three high, high tension bars coming in from the inverter to the motor. 
You can see there's actually like a gasket as well. So you gotta be careful. There's a lot of stuff going on in here and you don't have a whole lot of room to work. This is super heavy. That's the motor. This is way lighter. So it allows me to sort of swing this over to the side a little bit and just leave it right about here. And it should give me enough room to get to, to walk the whole differential assembly out. So you wanna be really careful. You're working with a lot of machine surfaces and quite a bit of weight. It's going. It's is it? Yeah. Right at the edge. Yeah! Nice. All right, so just right at the very edge of this, everything looks good when she comes out. I built a lot of transmissions in my days. It's not like a traditional ring and pinion where you're worried about your ring depth and how far you are. It's just so crazy that you can take the ring gear from one assembly and put it into another and it works. So Loss, um, bring it in here. This is kind of cool too. Because of the way the Camaro is configured and the space restraints, they have it mounted upside down. They literally took the front and rotate it back. So forward is still forward, backward is still backward. But what that also meant is that now your sump that usually sits here is needed to be here. So that explains this bizarre hose, these clamps, these little extra wires and some pieces that have been hand machined out uh, to accommodate this hose extension to allow the oil pickup to pick up from what, when it's in the Camaro is actually the sump. This guy's gonna go in there. So uh, let's split this case. Now it's uh, cleanup time. This was modified um, already, so this has areas that have been, you know, sort of machined out. Here's the wire, the safety wire that was in here before. I actually machined that case a little bit more to give you a little bit more room. And rather than doing the, just the divot, I actually bored a hole so it made it so the, the filter just sat in it. You didn't have to ever worry about walking out into the yeah. ring gear. Something I preferred, and I, I ran a little bigger on the wire. We'll get the other one working just fine. This is what's called critical yet mundane. So important. Just keep telling yourself that as you're doing it. <laughs> Three hours. That's from uh, SpongeBob. SpongeBob, yeah. Yeah. SpongeBob. Not, not that I watch it. Mine, <laughs> <laughs> mom. Open up a ball, and he sees that you have a silver T-shirt. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> silver surfer. Yes. Yeah, that stuff is 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 magic. Like someone over there is using it, and suddenly you have a smudge of it on your cheek somehow. <laughs> like what just happened? So this side must be the sling side, and they're trying to do some extra protection on the case. So you'll see there's an O-ring sam that runs the length of the case. Yeah. So just be cognizant of that as you're cleaning. All the Euro stuff I did, you know, we never used silicone on the cases. We used this um, stuff that we would get from Worth. It was designed for cases. It hardened under compression on the machine surfaces, so you never had to worry about silicone, you know, being between the cases, so you don't have to worry about the cases ever moving. So your oil pan, was actually the transmission case, and then the case ran down alongside the transmission, right? The gasket, over time, between heat and pressure, would compress. So then what would happen? All the bolts would loosen up and fall out. You'd have a car come in, like, I had this terrible oil leak. Like, wow, yeah, really? What is it? And it was a certain year car, you could almost guarantee that you'd reach under there and you could feel around, there's no bolts on one side of it. That's a uh, super cool about uh, putting silicone off aluminum cases. I thought going to EVs, I would have to do this anymore. <laughs> Some things never change. Things never change. That was nice. Of course, you weren't filming that. What's that? Because the, the, the diff just slid oh. in so, so nice. Take it out and do it again. Nope. <laughs> uh, this is silicone. These are a couple of water ports. So you go sort of thin right here because you don't want them to... This one in particular, this is a, a coolant port that comes over it runs down the side of the diff and it's a really cool little heat exchanger behind this this plate over here and there's restrictors there's an o-ring on one side and it's just flat on the other side so i do a real thin layer of silicone around and then just make sure the center remains clear so you don't have to worry about the silicone squeezing into the orifice once she's assembled no leaks and no blockages very exciting so what type of silicone are you using? This is a Permatex Ultra. So it's referred to as a gasket maker, so it works with cases as well. So it can work under really good compression. In some cases, you know, you'll have a silicone that will compress and it will actually compress right out. It will squeeze out like a jelly, you know? So really good quality, high strength, high compression. Yeah, it can take high pressures, high temps, obviously different fluids. Oh. 
<laughs> All right, hold on a second, loss. Almost a major. Uh, O-ring still on that. Yep. Good catch. Come on, baby. There we go. I'm starting to go. You know when they appreciate it? When it's when it's not yeah. leaking. <laughs> Anyone hear anything on FD? Osmo 8. 8? Yeah, yeah. Slacker. There were 36 guys qualifying for the 32. Oh, good. Uh, one of the rookie drivers did fourth, got a 93 in qualifying. Kid in a BMW? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty good. Well, there's Reader also who's doing good. Yeah, Travis is doing well. And well, how about the other boys? Johnny? Jonathan? Uh, Johnny didn't make it. Missed the cut. Really? Long Beach. I mean, he was, he was on fire. Yeah, man, he was like, who is that guy? I mean that in a good way. You give him a good pair of shoes, he can run fast, right? I'm just bringing the case in right now, all the way around, then we'll, we'll hit it. Okay, so we've got the diffs swapped on both. Next step is we pop off the inverter covers and swap out the driver board. So the sport drive will be getting the new AEM inverter driver board. And then right after that, back in the cradle, back in the car, and back in the lot for some fun.